Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a very cool Chevy muscle truck. Now, we all know that the custom sports trucks of the 60s could be had with 396s after like 67, 68, and of course in 73 up, which is what this cab is, the uh, square cab or square body type, you can get a 454 in a Chevy pickup truck. But what about these monsters, these C60s? Well, as we look on this thing here, there's a big block Chevy under the hood but the valve covers say 427. Now you're gonna go, what, 427? That's a Corvette engine, right? Well, it is true, up till 69, the 427 went away, became a 454 in 70, except for trucks. Truck 427s are different, and here's how and why. Before we explain that, let's take a quick peek at this thing. And the interesting stuff, this is basically a heavy duty piece, but the air cleaner lid, if you know your mid 60s Chevy Impalas and stuff, this is a 283 air cleaner lid right here, minus the snorkel. We can see our L86, oh, hang on, L86, that means 366. Hmm, that's a big block, it's a truck engine, to be continued. But again, beyond that, we see the massive truck air filter filter element with like twice, three times the surface area of an automotive type element. And the base plate is pretty cool. It has an extension on it to rise up a little bit away from the engine. And these vents in the bottom stamped in to promote airflow. This is essentially a silenced, unsilenced air cleaner. Truck only piece right here. Now getting back to this, this 427 that we have right here, we see right there it says 427. But here's the thing, the Chevy 427 truck and car engines share the same four and a quarter inch bore and three and three quarter inch stroke. And they even share the same 6.135 inch connecting rods. But the truck 427 has a taller deck. Instead of 9.8 inches, it's 10.2 inches. And that's all seen right here. And that's all about having a taller deck for the special pistons these things have, which have four ring sets instead of three as on a passenger car. So again, this is a low compression 8.3 to one, uh, 427 truck engine. And again, the beauty of these things really is the fact that uh, modern GM 572 crate engines are based on the very same tall deck block right here that we see in use. And the beauty of these Chevy truck engines, these 427s and the 366s, although 366s, 366 not so much, but four bolt mains, forged cranks, forged rods. So if you're looking for upgrade stuff, your cast crank 427, uh, look no further than a truck 427. Now we see here, of course, the four barrel intake, iron, uh, but that's a Holly bolt pattern. And yeah, these things used a Holly four barrel, even in the 1970s, like we see right here. The exhaust manifolds are very similar to 427 Corvette stuff, although they're center dumps, but again, the same um, streamlined sweeping runners. Uh, the heads are the same as car, but these are what we call peanut ports, which means they have very small ports. They're not good for high RPM airflow. But again, uh, this is a useful block if you want to build a stroker, you know, like a 499 or a 572 or any of those crazy combos. Now, this manifold here is not usable on a low deck 427 or 454, 396. It's too wide. So again, that's a truck specific piece. There's the HEI, which can be used on a low deck, but this should you'd have to have a sleeve uh, to accommodate the extra height on the drive shaft inside of that thing. But other things that are unique to the truck 427 are the intake manifold with two thermostats, this one up top and then one here feeding the front of the water pump. So heavy duty stuff, you know, Chrysler big blocks. There's a 413 truck engine in Chrysler land. It's kind of similar. It's like a 413 car engine, but it's not. So again, the crazy thing though, you see this Goodwrench 427. This is Chevrolet's first crate engine. Back in the early 80s, the Goodwrench program was Chevrolet's remanufactured engine program. They made 350s. It was also the Target Master, but the Goodwrench 427 right here, this is a Chevy 427 crate engine, but not what you think. Again, these were remanufactured, and these are the kind of engines that you'd buy if you had a snow plow or a dump truck or like this thing here, uh, and your original motor blew up, you just get a Goodwrench engine, plop it in there, and yeah, 427. But again, these have taller pistons with four ring packs, a lot of friction, no RPM capability, tiny heads, tiny valves, but the block, the crank, the rods, 
they're usable for stroker motors and for high performance use. Uh, let's continue our search on this thing here. Uh, it says here, Fred's Mobile Home Service and Transport. We'll get to that in a second. Originally in Winchester, New Hampshire. Gasoline, of course. Oh, here comes the train. <laughs> anyway, but gasoline. And look at this, a Ford gas tank right there. That's kind of weird. Probably added on or adapted from some other application. Who knows? But uh, Ford made tanks, of course, but uh, it found its way onto this Chevrolet. Now, going inside. Yeah, okay. There's the five-speed manual transmission, two-speed rear axle. And we see the center, the buddy seat right there. Well, it's embossed with the words, not for sitting. That central seat is more of a suggestion for uh, like an armrest kind of thing. You're not supposed to sit on that. So says the label. I bet you people did anyway. But this does have the SPID or the specification identification sticker. And we can see on the far side, uh, it does have the code for... L86, which means, yeah, this was born a 366, not a 427. So when the 366 gave up the ghost, somebody sent away for a good wrench 427 and enjoyed an additional 50 odd cubic inches, a little more torque. So again, but the spit is a wonderful thing. You'll find that in pretty much all General Motors and Chevrolet trucks from the uh, 60s and 70s, and they kind of tell you the vehicle's DNA. Now, getting back to this truck's purpose in life, uh, the mobile home, not motor home, but the mobile home towing of this thing, kind of some moot things hiding in plain sight. Notice how the rear view mirrors stick way out and they're adjustable. These mounts here, you can stick them way out. That's because this was born to tow mobile homes from the manufacturer to the campground or sometimes from one campground to the next and you got you know mobile home parks are sort of places for people to live who don't want to buy an actual home they're inexpensive they're a good value really but to get them where they got to go this is the kind of rig that did the job now we can see right here it doesn't have a fifth wheel there's no tow boom rather it has an adjustable height pintle hitch right here. There'd be a locator right here, and this would link onto the back of the trailer, which of all the built-in wheels, I should say, underneath the uh, mobile home. Again, a lot of weight here, and I would imagine it's possible this is a big steel tank with a screw on cap. I would bet that might have been used for ballast, fill that thing with water, and like maybe on a snowy or an icy day, that would help this thing to grip and pull that uh, mobile home down the highway or the mass pike. But again, this is the kind of truck right here that you would see coming down the slow lane with the wide load sign with the pilot car in front of it uh, with the pilot car behind it has the DOT mandates and again this is basically a 427 powered mobile home move-in machine. Pretty cool piece, a six wheel. And again, that cab can be utilized on a Chevy pickup truck. It's very much the same. Uh, the rear window we can see though is specific to the big truck. Uh, the pickup trucks, the smaller vehicles would have a much wider rear window. Whereas on the C40, 50, 60, 70, 80, truck, 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 they have a smaller window right there. But again, because they would rely on the mirrors, the big mirrors more than the back window for backing up. Because more often than not, these would have a box on them and the rear window doesn't even do anything because you can't see through it with the box. But again, anyways, that's the story of this Chevy 427 muscle truck mobile home hauling machine right here at Berniston Auto Reckoning. If you like this video, stick around. Tomorrow there's a brand new one coming up. And be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's Muscle Car Show YouTube channel.